Hello, everybody, and welcome to the United Stand. It's a Monday, and I'm joined by Ben Foster, former Manchester United player and England goalkeeper. How are you doing? Lovely, lovely. I'm doing the old talk sport thing there, you know, where they get, give a little bit more than what, about what you are. A bit of um, background. Cyclist. 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 Yeah, entrepreneur. Don't know about that. Lover of fish. I don't know. <laughs> Do you? I don't know. Uh, anyway, let's get on with the show. What I want to talk about straight away, because we did one a couple of weeks ago, and we're talking about your experience of Dan Ashworth and what he's like. Yeah. I want to talk about what it's like to be in a dressing room when there's uncertainty about a manager. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think a lot of our, comment, uh, our viewers will appreciate this. Some are Ten Hag in, some are Ten Hag out. But without doubt, you watch Man United against Everton, which we'll talk about as well. And United were, a, a, you know, a bit up and down. Like, some players look really focused, like Johnny Evans, Varane, even Anana played well. And they got, a, you know, the same old culprits, I suppose. You just don't look at, like, Rashford, Bruno, Casemiro. Nowhere near the level that they're at. Yeah. Um, you know, I deserve to win, but what is it like in the dressing room? What do you think? Well, first of all, what do you think is going on in that dressing yeah. room? Do you think that some of these players have mentally checked out this season? Why is it they can't discover any form? Do you sort of get into a position where you don't want to? Because it's a very flat season for some of these players. Yeah, it's um, it's, it's difficult when there is uncertainty, uncertainty about the manager. You, you, what you'll find is you'll, got, you'll have the, the senior pros, the good lads, the people that do it properly, like you say, yeah, the Johnny Evans, the Varans, that, um, that will not look to use it as an excuse. They won't use the uncertainty as an excuse. They just go about their job. They do what they do. If they're selected, brilliant. If they play, brilliant. They'll give you everything they've got. And then you've got a lot of other players that will... Um, Let's just say like the, the fancier players, they will be the ones that if they do go and lose or if they do hit a bad run of form, they will look for excuses and the excuses will come from anywhere they can find them, basically. That will be the manager. It will be, I'm not playing in my right position. I'm, I'm injured. I've got this. I've got that. And that, that's just what happens. But unfortunately, in the modern game, you get a lot of them players now. That takes over the majority of the dressing room um, unless you've built a proper football club from the ground up and you know exactly what you've got. And I, I just feel Man United have got too many of them players, really, that would probably look to blame something. However, what you have to say is, it's another win. It's another victory. And at the end of the day, whether you're playing Everton at home or away or whoever it is in the Premier League, no game is a given. So to get the three points and a clean sheet, um, it's a good Saturday's work. Ten Hag said on Friday before the game, it's hard to build a team morale in the modern game because players aren't together mm. as much as maybe they were because you've got players who are individuals because they're surrounded by people who aren't in the club yeah. and agents and stuff. What is the modern, you've been in so many and you've seen the transition. How, did you notice a change over the years? Yeah. What is the modern dressing room? Because I was talking on the show last night about this nonsense that was on social media. And I said, surprise, surprise, there's probably people in that, well, there is people in that dressing room who don't actually get on. Yeah. What is the modern dressing room like yeah. before a game? Is that, you know, is everyone in a hug or is it? No, is it definitely not. No. Or? Again, it's it's like any workplace, though. You know, if you if you go to to work, if you go to school, um, there's there's people that you see every day and you have to work with. You have to try and get on with, but you might not get on with them. You might not agree with them. You might not even necessarily like them, but you still have to put a bit of a front on, especially when you're representing Man United. You have to put a bit of a front on. You have to act like everything's okay. You have to say everything's okay. Um, but deep down, you, you might not get on with that person. That's real life. That's mm. just how it works. Um, the modern footballer, though, is, is very different to, to what they used to be. Um, obviously, phones are massive nowadays, and they're just kids. You've got to understand that they are. They're just kids. They're 22, 23, 24-year-olds. And that that phone is their world. They have grown up with that phone just right in front of their face. So the second they get into the training ground in the morning, they're straight on the phone. Um, any kind of quiet period, downtime, instead of talking now, instead of having a bit of a conversation and a chat. And the senior lads will do it. The older lads will do it. The 30 pluses, and they will sit down, and it will be a bit of a Did you see this? Did you do that? Did you? Well, well and it's a conversation. But the younger lads, they are very much in their own sphere. They their phone, and they'll be messaging their friends and. And it is, it's a shame really because it does, it detracts from that sort of team spirit. You want everybody to be together and helping each other and everybody pulling in the same direction. But I think what this is breeding is, is individuals nowadays. Yeah, it's interesting because you could almost fall into the trap of going, well, look, what you're saying makes sense. You can see the older lads like Johnny Evans yeah. and Varane and, 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 you know, De Gea before and, you mm. know, Casimir had a bad game at the weekend. But those sort of players sort of being very much, you know, talking and, and then you can imagine some of the other players who aren't like that but then you look at other clubs they've got the same mix of young players they don't have that problem at an Arsenal or, or a Liverpool or a Manchester City yeah um how, how do you think that um how do you think that how do you how do you how do you how do you change that then 
Well, is, 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 it, is it actually personality of player? You've yeah, got to bring the right players yeah, in. You've got to bring the right players in. And it's also um, something that comes from the top as well. So there's been football clubs that I've been in where the manager will say, no phones in the dressing rooms, mm. nothing. I don't want to see I'm in the canteen. I don't want to see you carrying it in your pocket. I don't want to see you on it on a match day. I don't want to see, I just don't want to see your mobile phone, okay? So, idea, so it? yeah, it's a really good idea. It's, it's what like, is it, an hour or two out of your day? Exactly that, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Nowadays, kids are so used to just, it's like their safety blanket, isn't it? They've got them in the change rooms after the game. Oh, yeah, of course, doing yeah, little, yeah. Um, I think Ganacho, Mainu, and um, Ahmad, I don't know whether it was after the game against Everton, but they were in the dressing I mean, look, it was it was, it was fun. Yeah, they were having yeah, fun. Yeah, for sure, they were yeah. doing some sort of, yeah, like, we yeah, did yeah. on TikTok ranking players That's and stuff it, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. But it just shows you that, I mean, I, I imagine every Premier League club's got phones after the match. Most of the time, after the match, you're allowed your phone. Yeah, yeah you're allowed your phone. Once the manager's come in and done his team talk and, and it's kind of like, well done, lads, you can go now to go and get showered, go and get massaged, whatever you need. That's when you can bring your phone out, and that's fine. Everybody can do that, but it's the beforehand bit. Yeah, yeah. It's the it's the before team morale. Isn't team it? morale. Waiting for a team meeting, waiting for dinner, waiting for lunch, sitting at the table. Mm. You're not allowed to have your mobile phone out because we want you to talk. We want you to get comfortable being in that team surrounding where you all have to just sort of find out a little bit about your mate, ask him a question, ask him. That's why team nights out used to be such a big deal is because once players had a few drinks, they would kind of loosen up a little bit and you might find out something about your teammate that will, in the future, make you get on better with that person. Um, but it is, it's a, it's a thing that comes from the top where if they set the standard and they say, no, there's no phones, I don't want to see your phone, I don't want to see it in your pocket, in your, in your shorts, in training. I don't want to see it anywhere. Do you know what I mean? Walking around the building. Leave it in your locker and it's simple as that. Um, but some clubs just don't really take any notice of that. They let the players do what they do, which which breeds a lot of sort of players just sort of hiding away really and just, just wanting to go on the phone. What are they looking at? Just, just, just completely? Everything. Yeah. It's social media. It's just pure social media, it's mate. It is. It's pure social media. They'll be looking oh. at, they'll be scrolling Instagram, they'll be scrolling the Snapchat, chatting to the mates. Um, it's, it's just the way that it goes. They'll be on TikTok, they'll be looking at funny videos. Um, that's, that's the, and it's the funny way. because obviously we operate in that world, but I operate in this world for you. You know, I'm, I'm, I want to interact with United fans. I'm a United fan. I want to talk about that. I don't really want footballers taking notice of it. Good or bad, they will do. Every but they because see everything. Because it's like they see everything. I, I know. Like I in the early days, I used to take a lot of notice of reading replies and that. And, yeah. And it really impacts you. Yeah, yeah. I don't do it now. I post. I get out. Yeah. There's no point. But it's worrying that players spend a lot of their time doing that, even though I operate in that space. It, do you know what? It's it's funny because um, they should take they should take no notice of what people are saying about them. Really, no. they should take no notice Look of what mirror. fan. Is, ask your manager, ask your coach, ask your, your mum and dad, your parents, the people that mean the most to you, the people that are actually important, whose voice should carry a bit of weight. Don't listen to the little trolls or the people, or the, even fans in general, you know, don't listen to that. Don't listen to the comments, but they will. They'll watch a video and then they'll click on the comments like everybody does. They want to see what people are saying about it's that. Insta right. They want to see what people are saying about that, what the general consensus is. And it's sad, really, because that, that shouldn't even enter their sphere, but unfortunately it does. No, I mean, I think as a fan, what I would like is for, obviously, as a Man United fan, I, I would just love to have that dressing room where, you know, it would have had would have been in the past, I'm sure you were in them, where, I mean, obviously phones didn't exist, but there's no reason because phones exist. I mean, we're, we're starting, I don't want to turn this into this, but I was watching the video last week about, you know, you can't even believe what you read on Twitter. Yeah. You know, these, you know, everyone knows who Ben Foster is, everyone knows who I am. It's, it's visible, but there are faceless accounts there that, you know, AI can whack up in seconds of course, yeah. and just churn, and, and, and churn out an algorithm. Yeah. You don't even know if it's real. No. So it's dangerous. You need to get out there and touch grass and interact with people. Yeah. And I think when you're in a dressing room, like, you know, oh, I just want to see a United side as move it towards Everton. I want to see a United side where they actually are all together. You know, they're, 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 they're the team. Because when I watch United, the reason we spoke about that is really interesting, is when I watch the Everton game, they're not as good as Man United. No. And, and there was a myth. I mean, I don't know whether you saw it. You, you in fact, said you had to listen to it on the radio. Yeah. And you were talk talking to me about Casemiro. They were saying on the radio, Casemiro had a good game. Yeah. I'm like, I love Casemiro. Trust me, he had a really bad game. But it's like Everton did come and play a system. Yeah. And, and, and whatever's going on in that dressing room, they're, they're all together. Yeah, you know, they the know Dwight what they're Manils, doing. Yeah. The yeah. the Branthwaite's, the Anana, they're all together. And you watch United and you go, they deserve to win. And Everton's chances weren't as clear-cut as ours. But what I will admit is, I can just see it visibly every game. That United team is not together. Yeah. Four or five players will play well, and four or five players are sort of like, it's almost like they're they're in the fog. Yeah. It's not that I don't think they're on purpose. They just look a bit lost. They're just floating around the place. The, thing, the problem is, well, not the problem, but it's the it's the pure fact of football. If if Everton had um, 
the ability that Manchester United had, then you they would merge the two. Yeah, they they would they would be higher at the table. They would have um, you know they would play a different style of football. But because they haven't got that ability, the only way they can survive is by playing as a team, by mm. playing as a unit. Structure. Sean Dyche is classic. The, you know what you're going to get from Sean Dyche. At least everybody will be on the same page. Yeah. Once you start adding in those personalities who are a bit more individuals, a bit more skillful, a bit more this, and then you have to you have to give them a certain bit of leeway to go right, go and express yourself and go and show me what you can do. But one thing that I would always demand, and what Sean Dyche would always demand, for example, is just pure work rate. And I was listening to Radio, like you said, and there was they made a point of basically saying that Rashford was working a lot harder than what he normally yeah, he does. Yeah, he did. But yeah, I would agree with so that. So that was one thing that they said. But it's not um, enough. That's the trouble. Exactly. It's, it's, like, not it's enough. like with Bruno and, and Rashford and Casemiro at the weekend. At no point did I go, they've downed tools. They're not yeah. giving it. I think they're in the fog. Yeah. I, I think there's something going on because their work rate's there. But that's not Marcus Rashford, I know. No, you need, that's not you need Bruno Fernandes, more, yeah, I know. Yeah. I gave them like six is average. I gave them five and people were going mad. And I said, no, because... I can give Scott McTominay a six because that's Scott McTominay's average yeah, performance. Yeah, yeah. But Bruno's average is not that. Yeah. Rashford's af- average is not he's that. Performing below he's average. Below what his yeah, average yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah, they said on the radio that Rashford basically first half worked his socks off, was tracking mm. back, was doing some good stuff. Then second half, he started the second half badly and it just got worse from there, really. He kind of didn't really want to put the work rate in. They were 2 0 up, they were comfortable, they were cruising. So he just sort of went in an autopilot mode. Um, which is, you don't want that. Do you know what I mean? When you're talking about some of the highest paid players in the league, you want constant 90 minutes. Like you watched that Man, Man City Liverpool game yeah, yesterday. It's not one player that. takes their foot off the gas. No. Not one player. They don't get involved, don't they? They, they get all get involved. They all want a part of it. They all want to. They want to give everything they've got. Um, another thing they they said on the radio was that. Everton had so many chances. So I'm listening on the radio yeah. and it was like, and Everton have missed another chance. Ever- and Everton have missed another chance. And oh, Man United are giving up so many chances here. And then I've watched the highlights on YouTube yesterday and I'm thinking, this- I don't see one man- one Everton chance whatsoever. Like, So is this a bit of a conspiracy or what? Are they are they just got the, the daggers out for Ten Hag and for Man United? I what? think you win a game and a lot of the journalists and a lot of the media were pulling up these lists about how many chances Man United have conceded, conceded this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. But I sort of like go... But on the other hand, people are slagging an honour off. So if they were really good chances, they'd be goals. Well, just, well you look think... at the stat. I just had a look, little look at the stats there, and possessions about 50 50. Uh, Everton and Man United, in terms of shots on target and off target, are about the same. They're mm. about sort of six or seven each, or eight each, or whatever. Um, I think uh, Everton probably had more more uh, corners, but that stats are just stats. You can read into stats however you want to read into stats, yeah? Until you watch the game and see what those chances actually look like, you know, a a shot on target could be a 50-yard shot that's a P-roller into an Arna's hands, and that counts the same as as a shot from two yards that should be a guilt-edged goal. It should be... So that's what I mean. You can read into stats whatever you want. You have to watch it with your own eyes sometimes. Here's an interesting stat. Um, I've I've told the comments about they might know it already. Um, 47 points from 28 games. Mm -hmm. Last season, 53 points from 28 games. wouldn't believe it. it's only a six points yeah, win yeah. from last season six where it was going really well yeah, to right. now where it's like we need to sack the manager. Yeah. Um, and I think I think that you know he's got the best win ratio. He's he's good at getting results. But yeah, I mean I just go back to the to the to the dressing room and and, and the manager. Um, does that look like a team to you, or are they behaving like a team for you that's that's behind this manager as a whole team, or do you? I, you know what? What are your thoughts on it? I don't. I, I don't, think some players are. I don't think it, there's any difference between this manager or the last few managers and how the players seem to sort of act on the pitch and how mm. they seem to act. Um, they, they all. I, th- I think it's just it is what it is for Man United. I, I, I don't care what manager you put in there; they would still act the same way. I just don't. I'm pretty I, sure I just of it. don't think the jigsaw. Pe- well, you know, you did your jigsaw yesterday. Yeah. I just don't think the pieces fit together. And I think that some people don't, can't understand that. I mean, we tried to play out from the back for five minutes and, and, and we were terrible at it. I just think when you look at a Liverpool or a Man City or even an Everton, they know what job they're doing. Yeah, sure. They know their system and yeah. they know what they're doing. I'm, I'm, I don't think they're... I, I wouldn't say they're necessarily not behind the manager, though. I'm, I'm saying that they just look the same as they always That's look. what I mean. I, I, that I mean, might just be their level of, of what they do. I, may, well, exactly. Maybe, the, maybe these players are behind the manager and they want to do their best but it's like you know square pegs and round holes they just can't yeah. do they, they don't fit because to be honest some of them are Mourinho signings some of them are Ali signings some of them are even Van Hal signings some of them are Ten Hag yeah, signings yeah. well those four managers straight away are not the same what's it right recipe wrong ingredients there you well, go well the, the team yes, uh, the team against Everton only two of those players that started were bought by Ten Hag yeah. and Bruno Rashford Lindelof Evans and the low, you know, a lot of those are like Ollie, 
Mourinho. With regards to... Uh, Sir Alex, Johnny Evans, isn't he? Well, well with regards to the defence, Johnny Evans specifically, um, you know, I remember when he when he signed in the summer and um, a lot of us were saying, he'll, he'll end up playing for United, he will. He'll end up playing for United. And and it's it's come true and it's it's because he is, Johnny Evans is a good lad. Yep. He's gives you 110%, he will never shirk away from anything, and he will he will stand up and be counted. It's as simple as that. And that, in football, honestly, will outsee everything. It will outsee everything in football. If you've got that, then couple it with actual ability. Mm. And I think Johnny Evans has got actual ability. The reason why he plays most weeks is because the manager sees him and understands. And yeah, I know, job, he, he? I know he's getting old, and I know he's this, and but... I would, I would, I love playing in front with Johnny Evans. When I was at West Brom with him, when I was at Man United, I loved playing with Johnny Evans because I, again, I knew he would be there when the rubbish hits the fan. I knew it. I knew he'd stand up, stand up and count, be counted. And they're the sort of players that you do need on your team. If only he was twenty-five. And not I know. 25. Yeah. I know. Um, be interesting, actually, just on that, uh, a lot of people were talking about this. You've got Harry Maguire, 31. You've got Johnny Evans, 35. Very similar players in relation to good in the air, not particularly quick. Yeah. Nice, good defenders on the edge of the box. Johnny Evans, much better on the ball. Johnny Evans is, well, is, is, I was, is I was much saying, better on the ball. I would, I'd give Johnny Evans another year and sell Maguire because Maguire's got a sell-on value, whereas yeah. Johnny Evans is basically going to retire, isn't he, after yeah. United? So w w would you do that? Would you... I, I, I would, I would, I don't. With regards to Harry Maguire, you know, there's, he's had a good season. There, there's, there's so much to be, you know. Again, he's he's the sort of player that I would like to have in my team because I know what I'm going to get from him. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's there's defenders who you can kind of like put players around Harry Maguire that will help him and help the team. Um, I wouldn't necessarily look to to sell Harry Maguire whatsoever because one, I think there's. Yeah, but you can't have Evans and Maguire. No, uh, sure, but Johnny Evans isn't going to be able to play every week. Harry Maguire picks up injuries, little niggles and knocks all the time. So you. That's the problem you've got with them sort of two players is that they are going to pick up niggles. And to be fair, you look at that whole Man United back line and every single one of them seems to pick up knocks and niggles, whoever they are, whether it's Martinez or Lindelof or Dallo, they, Luke Shaw. They, they very injury-prone Varane, players. Yeah. Varane, very injury-prone players. So you need to have a good six or seven of them just to make sure that you, you can get two or three or four of them on the pitch on a Saturday. A lot of work to do. Yeah. Uh, thanks for that, Ben. Really interesting around the dressing room and stuff. Uh, get your comments in below as well. Uh, See you next week. All the best. Cheers. Enjoy your fishing. Don't fish.